Chapter 4 Logan The cafe was a hole in the wall, a shadow nestled in Adelaide's concrete heart. I pushed through the door, a soft chime announcing me to the underworld denizens. Eyes flicked up, then away. None lingered. Good. Dim bulbs hung from a grimy ceiling, casting more gloom than light. The smell of stale coffee mingled with the earthy scent of damp soil that crept in from the street above. I scanned the room, each face a mask of indifference or preoccupation. Then, her. A solitary figure in the corner, back to the wall, eyes on a screen. Her fingers danced across the keyboard, a silent melody of clicks and taps. Doom-laden. Alone, as expected. She didn't glance up, but I knew she'd clocked me two steps in. My pulse raced. My palms felt slick against the cool metal handle of my briefcase. Mind if I join you? I managed, voice steady despite the adrenaline. Take a seat, out back, she said without looking up, her voice low, even. That was the code name we'd agreed upon. Out back for me, a nod to my rural roots, doom laden for her, the enigma I was about to unravel. Thanks, I said, and pulled out the chair opposite her, its legs scraping sharply against the tiled floor. A couple of heads turned at the sound, quickly losing interest. In this game, anonymity was king. Outback wasn't just a nickname, it was my armour. My new skin in this world where Logan Robinson, the IT consultant with a military past and a face marred by acne, didn't belong. I kept the conversation clipped, the details sparse. We were here to learn, not to share life stories. Ready to dive in? she asked, finally lifting her gaze to meet mine. Her eyes, a piercing dark blue, offered no comfort only the cold promise of knowledge hard-earned. Born ready, I replied, the lie smooth on my tongue. My heart hammered, but my fingers were calm, trained to deliver messages that could shift the tides of power. Now they itched to unlock the secrets she held. This was it. This was the beginning of my fight, my stand against the command and control that had once threatened to crush me. Here, in this underground refuge, I'd find my purpose. I'd become the hacker I needed to be, for justice, for survival, for the friendships I hadn't yet forged, but would come to rely on in the wild, unforgiving expanse of the digital frontier. Her eyes, blue and sharp as the click-clack of keys in a silent room, surveyed me, cool and calculating, a nod, slight but deliberate, a silent beckoning into her world. The hustle of the cafe became a distant murmur. Sit, she said, her voice barely above a whisper, drowned out by the grind of a coffee machine somewhere behind me. I obeyed, the chair scraping beneath me, the sound lost in the underground echo. My hands betrayed a tremor, not from the chill of the subterranean cafe, but from what lay ahead. I clenched them under the table, willing the shaking to stop. Out back, I managed, my voice steadier than my hands. Logan, she counted, each syllable measured, like dropping stones into still water. Her lips hinted at a smile, knowing and secretive. The air between us felt charged, heavy with unspoken packs and the weight of the unseen digital abyss we were perched on the edge of. My heart thrummed against my ribs, a relentless drum pushing me forward. She was doom-laden, the name uttered in hushed tones in the circles I longed to join. Renowned, feared, admired, and there she sat before me, her gaze cutting through the dim light, slicing away the remnants of Logan Robinson, leaving only Outback the persona I had crafted to survive in the shadows. Intimidating, isn't it? Her voice pulled me back from the edge of my own thoughts. 
Less than I imagined, I lied. She knew it too. Her smirk told me as much, but it also told me she didn't care for pretenses. We were beyond that now. My awe of her skill was a live wire, sparking against my skin, reminding me of the gap between us. But the intimidation, that was something else. It was the sensation of standing on the precipice, looking down at the jagged rocks of a new and perilous landscape. With her guidance, I would navigate it. Not just for me, but for the friendships I hadn't yet made for the fight against the faceless giants that preyed upon the weak. Good, Doomladen said, her voice sliding through the tension. Let's begin. Encryption. Doomladen's fingers danced over her keyboard, eyes locked on the screen. It's your cloak in the digital night. I nodded, leaning forward. Her words were my gospel now. Anonymity is not just a shield, it's your weapon. She glanced at me, gauging my understanding. Got it, I said, my mind racing to keep up. Good. She swung her laptop around. Watch closely. Code cascaded down the screen like a waterfall of secrets. She narrated each step, her voice steady, hypnotic. I watched, entranced by the symphony of her movements. Your turn. She slid the laptop to me. My hands hovered over the keys, once instruments of military messages, now weapons against the untouchable giants. My fingers found their rhythm, staccato taps echoing in the hushed cafe. Slow down, she commanded. Think, then execute. Right, I exhaled, refocusing. Each key press was deliberate, every command a calculated step in the cyber dance she led. See here? She pointed at an encrypted file. Crack it open. Like a safe, I murmured, dissecting the layers of digital armour. Exactly. A sly smile crept onto her lips. The code yielded to me, piece by piece, a puzzle I was beginning to understand. Keep this up, she leaned back, and you'll be more than just Outback. Outback, I echoed, feeling the weight of the name, the persona I'd become. It wasn't just about blending in anymore. It was about thriving in the shadows for the friendships that would be my lifeline. Friendship is rare in our world, Doom Laden spoke softly. Cherish it. I will, I promise. Will do, I promised, thinking of the bonds forged in silence and secrecy. Back to work, she snapped. The training continued, each challenge a testament to her skill each success a brick in the foundation of my new life. Never stop learning, she said, as we delved deeper into the night. That's how you survive. Understood. Survival wasn't just physical anymore. It was mental. It was digital. It was everything. Remember, she paused, peering into the shadows beyond us, you're never alone. Never alone, I repeated, a mantra for the journey ahead. Fingers danced on keys. Screens glowed in the dim light. Mistakes were made. Again, Doomladen insisted. Her voice was calm, a contrast to the rapid tapping that filled the air. Bugger it, I muttered under my breath, backspacing furiously. The lines of code blurred before my eyes, but her guidance was clear. Praise was scarce, corrections frequent. Focus, Outback. Precision over speed. Her words grounded me. My fingers steadied. Commands became more deliberate. Each keystroke carved a clearer path through the digital maze. Better, she nodded, a rare approval. Thanks, I replied, aware of the stakes, the weight of every lesson learnt. Listen up, she leaned forward. I've been where you are. Her stories unfolded like coded messages each one a revelation of power and principle. She talked of giants she toppled, secrets she laid bare. Her words painted pictures of shadowed boardrooms and faceless suits squirming under the spotlight of truth. Corporations, she spat the word as if it left a bad taste. Greedy, soulless. Justice, I echoed, 
feeling the pulse of her passion. It kindled something within me, a fire for fairness, a desire to dismantle deceit. Used my skills to level them, expose their lies to the world. Admirable, I said, the sentiment genuine. My past, a stark contrast, military precision, command obedience, now before me a new doctrine, hacking not for hierarchy, but for honour. Remember, we don't just hack because we can, Doomladen's eyes locked onto mine, fierce and unwavering. We do it because we must, because no one else will. Fight the good fight, I said, my own conviction growing with each word. Exactly. A smile cracked her stoic facade. Will do. I meant it. Every corrupt entity was a target. Every line of code a weapon. With her as my mentor, the possibilities seemed endless. I would become more than just a ghost in the machine. I would become a ghost at the boardroom table. I chuckled to myself, the ghost at the table. Good. She glanced at the clock. Keep practicing. Got it. I turned back to the screen, my resolve firm. Through the window, the night pressed against the glass, dark and infinite. Friendship is everything out here, she said softly, almost to herself. Don't forget that. Never, I replied, thinking of the camaraderie that would mean the difference between survival and downfall. In this vast, unforgiving landscape, allies were few, bonds precious. All right, time to wrap up. She shut her laptop with a decisive click. Thank you, I offered, sincerity heavy in my voice. Stay sharp out back, she said, standing. And remember, always have your mates backs. Will do, I answered, pushing back from the table. Her lessons would stick, her stories even more so. They weren't just tutorials. They were the blueprint of a cause, the framework of a newfound purpose. See you around, she said, disappearing into the shadows of the cafe. See you, I echoed, packing up my own gear. The streets outside were quiet, the world oblivious to the battles waged in bites and bandwidth. But I knew better now. I had a role to play, a mission to fulfil. With Doom Laden's words as my creed, I stepped into the night ready to take on whatever the digital frontier threw at me. The cursor blinked. A question burned in my throat. Backdoor entries, I said, eyes on Doomladen's stoic face. How do you cover your tracks? Proxies, her answer was succinct. Layers of them. Right. My brain churned. Proxies upon proxies. A digital labyrinth. Think of it like an outback track, she continued, tapping her finger on the table rhythmically. Cover your prints, wind through the scrub, leave no straight lines. Tracks can be followed, I counted. My past life whispered to me, the military, the land, the rules I used to live by. Only if they're careless, she shot back, her eyes locked onto mine. You won't be careless, will you, Logan? Never, I said. The weight of her gaze felt like a challenge. Show me, she commanded. My fingers danced over keys, commands weaving through virtual space. A mistake. The screen flashed an error. I flinched. Again, Doom Laden insisted, unmoved. Focus. I reset, concentrated. Commands flowed cleaner this time. Triumph spiked in my chest. She gave a slight nod, almost imperceptible. Good, she murmured. Now, think wider. Every system has its quirks. Learn them. Use them. Adapt, I said, understanding flickering like a light in the dark. Exactly. She leaned back, arms crossed. You're getting it. Getting it wasn't enough. I wanted mastery. To wield these skills like I did my old rifle. Precise, deadly, just. Throw something at me, I demanded, driven by the hunger to learn, to excel. All right, she smirked, an unspoken respect hung between us. Try this one. 
A string of code appeared on my screen, complex and daunting. My pulse quickened. This was it. Real training. Moments stretched into hours. The cafe grew silent around us, but our battle against the machines raged on. Look for patterns, Doom Laden coached. Think like a hacker, but also like the one who'd stop one. Two sides of the same coin, I muttered, my mind splitting in two. Exactly. The night aged as we delved deeper. Code became my language. The keyboard, my voice. Mistakes were made, lessons learned, successes achieved. Each line of code a step forward. Each command a closer bond with my unseen ally. Time slipping away, Doom Laden noted, eyes never leaving the screen. Let it, I replied. The outside world had faded. Only the mission remained. Stubborn, she said, almost affectionately. Persistent, I corrected, a small grin tugging at my lips. Same thing out here. Maybe, I agreed. But in my heart, I knew persistence was what kept you going. Stubbornness could get you killed. Keep pushing, she urged. Find your style, your signature. Signature, I echoed. Every artist has one. She pointed at the screen. Make your mark. Artists aren't usually anonymous, I pointed out. Best ones are, she retorted. They let their work speak for them. Then I'll be bloody Shakespeare, I declared, my confidence building. Good. She looked pleased. But remember, it's not about fame. It's about change. Change, I repeated, letting the word roll off my tongue. Yes, that was what I was after to make a difference, to fight back against those who took advantage of the powerless. Keep at it, Logan, Doom Laden said, her voice softening. You got the makings of a real hacker. Thanks, I replied, feeling a sense of kinship. Out here in the vast digital desert, it was us against them, and I wasn't alone. Remember, trust is rare, she added. Cherish it. Always. I promised, knowing too well the value of loyalty. All right, kid. Doom Laden stood up, stretching. That's enough for tonight. Is it ever enough? I asked, half joking. Never, she said, a ghost of a smile on her lips. But even hackers need sleep. Fair point, I conceded, powering down the laptop. Stay sharp, she advised, packing her gear. And keep practicing. Will do, I assured her. Her lessons were etched in my mind, her challenges fueling my resolve. See you around, Outback, she called out, disappearing into the shadows once more. See you, I echoed, stepping out into the cool Adelaide night, my thoughts alight with possibilities and a newfound determination to carve my path through the wilderness of the web. Fingers ached, eyes burned. Mind raced. Doom Laden pushed back from the table, her gaze piercing. Logan, she said, a steel edge to her voice. Time for the real lesson. I leaned in, every muscle tensed. Hit only the greedy, the corrupt, she instructed, her fingers drumming on the dark wood. Use your power for good, not for personal gain, not for revenge. Justice, I murmured, feeling the weight of her words. Exactly. A nod from her. Temptation's a beast. It'll lead you astray. Understood. I clenched my jaw. The itch for change was strong. Look, she continued, eyes softening. Remember why you're here. You're fighting a war against injustice. War, I echoed. Never lose sight, she pressed on. Your skills, they're a weapon. Sharpen them. Use them wisely. Right. Clarity hid like a bolt. Hacking wasn't just about getting in and getting out. It was more. Corporations, individuals, they exploit, Doom Laden said, leaning back. They think they're untouchable. Think, I repeated, grinning at the challenge. Making a difference. That's the goal, she affirmed. Can't let the bad guys win. Can't, I agreed, 
My hands itched to dance over the keys, to dive into the digital fray. Promise me, Logan, she fixed me with a look. No vendettas, only justice. Only justice, I promised. No room for error, no space for doubt. Good. She gathered her laptop. You've got potential. Thanks. Potential felt like a loaded gun, ready to fire. Aim had to be true. Keep this up, you'll make waves, she said, standing. Plan to. I stood, too. My mission clear. Fight corporate greed. Level the playing field. Take care, Logan. Her voice faded as she melded with the shadows. Will do. Alone now. The underground cafe empty. Just me and my resolve. Time to make a difference, I whispered, stepping into the night, into the fight against the giants. Thanks, I mutter my voice a low rumble in the quiet of the cafe. The words hang awkward, but they're sincere. Doom-laden nods, her eyes catching mine with that steel edge gaze. Check your email. Encrypted links, she says, sliding a scrap of paper across the table. It's got a string of numbers and letters, our lifeline in cyberspace. Got it, I reply, pocketing the future. A promise in digits and codes. Stay sharp, she advises, her tone the click of a lock falling into place. And remember, justice. Always, I stand, feeling every gram of the 115 kilos I carry. She's right. Justice is what this is about, not revenge. Good luck, Logan, she calls out as I turn to leave. Her voice stays with me, a ghostly command. I step out of the underground cafe, the door wheezing shut behind me. The Adelaide night is cool, a cloak thrown over the city's shoulders. My footsteps echo on the pavement. They're steady, like a metronome ticking down to zero hour. The streets are dim, lit by flickering lamps and the soft glow from windows. Shadows cling to the edges, my allies in this hidden war. I'm one of them now part of the unseen tide pushing against the bulwarks of greed. The knowledge buzzes in my head, a swarm of bees ready to sting. Encryption, anonymity, technique. Doom Laden's words etched into my brain, weaponized wisdom. I can feel the change, the shift from who I was to who I'll become. This isn't just about ones and zeros anymore. It's about righting wrongs about making the giants stumble. A dog barks in the distance. Its call is lonely, a reminder of the isolation in this path I've chosen. But there's a fire inside me, crackling and fierce. It's fueled by purpose, by the need to act. Time to make waves, I whisper to the night, to the city, to myself, ready to dive in, ready to fight. Corporate greed has a new enemy, and his name is Logan Robinson. The night swallows me whole. Streets stretch like veins through Adelaide's heart. I move silent, a ghost among shadows. Each step takes me further from who I was, closer to who I must be. Skyscrapers loom. They're titans, but not immortal. My fingers itch, the keys to their downfall. Doom Laden's lessons ring clear in my head. Strike true, stay hidden. I'm no longer just Logan Robinson, the IT consultant with clumsy hands and a heavy heart. I'm the whisper in the wires, the chill down the spine of corporate giants. Breath misting in the air, pockets deep, hood up. I blend into the night. It cloaks me an old mate shielding me from prying eyes. A tram glides past. I wait, watch. It's Adelaide's pulse throbbing under the city lights. People inside, unaware, lives intersecting, diverging, like mine and McBride's, soon to collide. She's out there, hunting. Stephanie McBride, the name dances on my tongue. A specialist, clever, sharp, she doesn't know me, not yet, 
but paths cross in strange ways here. Stay sharp, I mutter. Words cut the cold. No room for mistakes. Not with her on the prowl. Andy Del Monte's pal. Reporter. Eyes everywhere. I duck into an alley. It's narrow. Dark. Smells like yesterday's rubbish. And yesterday's urine. Perfect. Here I'm invisible. Just another piece of the puzzle. Another story waiting to unfold. Adrenaline pumps. Heart races. This is it, the start of something big, something necessary. Justice, I breathe out. The word hangs, then fades. Yeah, justice, that's what this is about. It has to be. My phone vibrates, a message, doom-laden. Remember who you fight for, it reads. I pocket the device, nod. Even in solitude, friends keep you sane keep you grounded. I push on. There's work to be done, systems to breach, truths to uncover. Each footfall is a promise, a vow to those trampled beneath the march of greed. The chapter closes. I vanish into the dark, onward to destiny, to battle, to Stephanie McBride, oblivious to the tangle ahead, unaware of the web spun around us all. And so, through Adelaide's dim-lit streets, I tread towards the dawn, toward the fight, toward the unknown. Let's dance, I whisper to the unseen foe. The game begins.